Uh, they take care of the Seahawks. Brock now 5-0 and against Seattle in his career. 255 yards. Kittle caught two touchdowns. 18 for 28 for Brock. Beautiful. Threw three overall. 129 passer rating. Come on, bro. Here's Kyle Shanahan. Pretty good. The first one was awesome. That was a long third down. Um, had a, you know, we're obviously struggling in the red zone to make a big play like that. I think it was third and goal from, I want to say, the 10. Um, but that was huge. It was a dime right in the corner. It was a hell of a route and catch by George. And then I thought the second one was just as impressive. Uh, we called a looky to BA. Uh, they played a coverage where two people were on him, and he went across the board and um, had a hell of a throw to George. Okay, here's Purdy on deeper throws, 10 or more yards downfield, six for 965 yards, two touchdowns, Looks pass rating almost at 150. You didn't like that yesterday. You, you accused Brew of uh, funny math or something last week. That's not. It. That's not it at all funny. That's not at all accurate or true. <laughs> but go ahead. And uh, you, you didn't uh, say ten yards, I, twenty yards, said, thirty okay, yards. Okay, we can same, we can we can relitigate yesterday's that. show. Didn't understand. But if instead of since that's where we're starting, leader of the show, What's all, the you agreed. You, you agreed with me yesterday that when we list when Brew listed the things Purdy was first in, and it was. 10 yard throws, 20 yard throws, 30 yard throws. Sometimes I do just said they just were the correlating. I do like Those, yards per game. I was on an island. Yeah, that's that's what what yeah, I was on right. an island they, yesterday they, defending Brock. No, Brock. Brock. That's fine. I was by what? myself. What? You two coming at me and grabbing <laughs> him once he got on. What? So what's the question? Were you impressed by Brock finally? Marginally, yes. Oh, oh my God. Well, here's the thing. It's if I said gets. I jaw dropped. I never thought he could do it. Mm -hmm. That's disrespectful. To be wildly impressed by Brock doing, you know, what exact, he tends to do. Well, also exactly what Daniel Jones and uh, Jared Goff did exactly. against Seattle. I mean, we can show it to you. It's the I have gotten bitten by buying into Seattle a little more than I should. Maybe Jared Goff, Wilds led the show with it, threw a perfect game. Daniel Jones got you. Greg Jennings came out, chest puffed out. And if you want to see Greg Jennings' chest, chest puffed out, <laughs> wait until Stay the tuned. B block today. Um, but no, I listen, I thought that he played really well. I thought, I think he continues to impress me with his escape ability, even though I do think he is flying a little too close to the sun with some of the scrambles. Not the, oh, let me get out of here and go run, but some of the doubling back and then doubling back yeah. again. It hasn't bitten him yet, but that feels like a disaster waiting to happen a at some point. A lot of point. guys, Mahomes will do some of that, Lamar yeah. will do some yes. of that. All the greats. I, I, I agree, <laughs> I, and I understand that Brock Purdy has a good 10-yard split, but I don't. I certainly don't put him in the athleticism category of Lamar, No. and I don't put him in the same athletic category as Patrick Mahomes. And so, listen, I, I think that there is going to be a thirst from either the audience or from my friend in the purple tie to give Brock, for me to give Brock Purdy more love for this performance than we as a show, except for Wilds, gave Jared Goff for his performance in a standalone night game against the Detroit, uh, against the Seattle Seahawks when he was 18 for 18 and even better pass rating, all that stuff. I'm not going to do that. But I will say, I, came, I was on here yesterday, mm -hmm. and I said I thought Seattle would keep it close and win in the end. They didn't. Purdy made the, the last touchdown pass I thought was his best, the one that Kyle was talking about there. The second one to Kittle I thought was a Kittle brilliance, and it was a great pass, but the best part of that was Kittle. And the first one was the catch and run. So I guess, yes, I was somewhat impressed by Purdy, but I also think he played an excellent game. I have no criticisms about the game. Do I even need to say No, it's a anything? short segment. <laughs> I mean, like, I sat here 24 hours ago uh -huh. and told you guys Brock Purdy is a bad man. Yeah. And then he went out last night and showed that he's a bad man. That's true. Now, Nick, you talked yesterday a lot about standards. Yeah. Let's hold Brock Purdy to this standard. You came on here earlier and said Patrick Mahomes, in a game where he had zero touchdowns, one interception, and a passer rating of 86.6 that he played the perfect game. Uh, yeah. What in the world was that last night we witnessed? Oh, By I, that standard. Yeah, I don't. I, Brock actually, Purdy wasn't better last night than Patrick, than Patrick Mahomes was on Sunday? No. Oh, my gosh. No. <laughs> I, what, what standard are we using? Missed throws. 
Patrick really? missed zero throws. He actually threw game. an interception because yeah, it was it was no, behind the guy. That wasn't a missed throw. If it would, it was it behind the guy. It was a missed throw, and it wasn't. A it was. Throw. He had no touchdowns. Yeah. Agree. I, I don't think you can play a perfect game with zero touchdowns. I, okay. But you can but, play one with three. Uh, and you can play one when you have a 129.3 passer rating. All right, so by that standard, he was magnificent last night. All right, he, Nick, like you said, show these, these two. I do want to interject real fast because I will say that I think you can play a perfect game without a passing touchdown because obviously you can be balling out, throwing the ball all over the place, but it just keeps getting to like the five-yard line, two-yard line, and then you hand it off for a touchdown. So I think sometimes passing touchdowns can sometimes be um, misleading in that regard because you can play an unbelievable game and have one passing touchdown or zero passing touchdowns. But I get what Brew is trying to say but it is kind of funny to say that someone like Mahomes or any of these other guys can play a perfect game right and another example is is Nick praising Dak Prescott against the Steelers when he had literally not one not two but three turnovers right you know and yet then it's like to not be truly impressed. There's still that resistance because he is saying, yeah, Brock played pretty well, but you can still see the resistance. You can still see the biting of the tongue and chewing on the cheek of like, yeah, he played pretty good, but look what Daniel Jones did. Look what Jared Goff did. And it's like, okay, well, like, let's see what these other quarterbacks did. Um, you know, against, say, the Giants, or look what Joe Flacco did and against the Steelers, right? Like, what, look what Joe Flacco did against the Pittsburgh Steelers. So there's there's never any other explanation for why the quarterbacks that um, Nick likes, for why they do what they do. But for Brock Purdy, it's, well, it, look what these other quarterbacks did against Seattle, or, well, this was this and that, and that's the inconsistency, and that's what Brew is, is essentially saying, but, you know, he used Mahomes as the example, which will automatically make everyone just start to lose their mind. Can we see the touchdowns to George Kittle? The passes were phenomenal. I don't know if we have them. The yeah, one, here's the know. one. I mean, yeah, that pass is unbelievable. It's over a, the defender. That's a great perfectly pass. Perfectly thrown it's pass. It's a great pass. And I, just it's an elite clear, pass. I wasn't trying to take away from the pass on this. I was saying no, I thought catch the, too. the Kittle Absolutely. getting three feet down on that mm -hmm. was remarkable. It that's was a, a perfect great pass. Yep. It's a perfect and pass. pass. And then the second pass, the second touchdown yep. to Kittle, was just as good. He, he had to throw it. Like, these two passes, this was, I he could throw in one place. And he did it. This, well, we this keep one. showing the yeah, same yeah. one. But the second one, he split. I, I don't know. At some point. <laughs> it's on a loop. Yeah. 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 All yeah. right, here, here we go. We only need to see it once, but he splits yeah. two defenders. Yeah. Has to be in the perfect spot, and he gets it the Moves only the place pocket. he can throw perfect it. I thought, that was, I thought that was the reason I thought that was his best play of the night was because if he didn't throw it the second he threw it, it's yeah. not right. caught. If he throws it a second earlier, it's not caught, or a quarter second. Timing. And if he throws it a quarter second later, I think it's picked. Or not picked, but you knocked down. Right. could be no, picked. No, it was a great. I thought that was a great play. So I'm not, I'm not acting and, like and, the guy and, can't make right. great plays. And like you said, his scrambling now, he scrambled for first downs, and he also scrambled, to your point, and made some passes for first downs. I want to compare him, though, to Geno, because you guys scoff at me, particularly you. When I say he's better than Geno Smith. Of course he's last better than Geno. Last night, here's the numbers. G big oh, game for both Gino of them. Last night. And, you know, Geno went to bed. Two interceptions. You know, just so I mean, a lot of yards. We threw it 50-something times. You know, it just... Purdy was excellent. Geno wasn't. Well, we have a debate about whether like or not Geno is. Total. Well, I, every better time I say Purdy? he's better than Geno, I, I get Geno's higher in the tiers. No, I get, no, I, get I, don't, I mean, I don't, I don't. I, I said yesterday he's having a better season. We got to hear it than Geno. Oh, you, and well, you that's said no way. Hold on, that's a different question. Okay, and but that, do you well, think he's after having a better season? Yeah. Well, after last night, when Geno has right, when Geno has his worst game last night, and Purdy has his best game. Yeah, but Geno still has. He has six touchdowns, six picks. Yes. Friday's nine and four. I understand. Pass but the prior I, I, to last night, Geno had four picks. So did Purdy. Purdy had uh, uh, three more fewer touchdowns. touchdowns. More, and Purdy it, had one more. Correct. Purdy had yeah, one so, more touchdown than so, Geno. Yeah, I, as rating. of so he's been he's been playing better. Twenty. Okay, I disagree with you. So I the, I think these are two different things. Is Brock Purdy higher in the holistic quarterback rankings than Geno Smith? Probably yes. Was Geno Smith, in my opinion, Probably having a yes. better season prior well, to yes. yesterday than Brock Purdy? Yes. But he's not now. No. Okay. One game is a huge percentage of the yes. season when we're five yes. weeks in. 
So well, no. here's the last thing I'll say about Purdy, and I, we do have a graphic. Last night was his eighth game of his career, which we know has been short, of three touchdowns, zero picks. Since he became a starter, no one's thrown six games like that. Mm -hmm. Jordan Love's got six, Golf five, Josh Allen four. Purdy's got twice as many as Josh Allen, who's third or fourth. So, I, like I said, he's a bad this I want to highlight real fast. And again, I'll, I'll let the rest of the clip play. But I really want to highlight this because a stat like this right here is proof that Brock Purdy is not just being carried by a great team or a great coach. Because this num that number is too high. It's too consistent. Brock Purdy is too consistent and does things like this too much for it to just be, well, he's just being carried. Because if you're just being carried by your team, by your coach, whatever it may be, eventually it falls apart. You, you can only be carried for so long at the quarterback position, okay? He wouldn't be able to do it at this rate unless the 49ers were just the most unbelievably stacked team ever, right? Like it would just, it would just be, they have, you know, five TOs or whatever. I mean, like, it just like, it just, it would just be so over the top that you would be like, and they would only be throwing little two yard passes, right? If it was just constantly just throwing a little two yard pass. But the fact that he's not only, that he's also leading with the 10, 20 and 30 yard passes as well also just shows that it's a lot more than that. And we look at the film and we know he's making some of the passes that he's making that these are not little three-yard passes that are then taken to the house. We know very confidently that Brock Purdy is a great quarterback. Again, if you want to say he's not top two, okay, that's fine, right? That's always fine. That's, that's always an acceptable conversation to be had. But it's a sheer fact that people want to consistently act like Brock Purdy is not invited to this party of great quarterbacks. That he's really just, again, in the category of uh Gino Smith um I forget I wish I had Nick's tears there because this isn't this isn't the the category that he's often usually discussed in but you know he's just he's he was at the, I think he's at the second to the bottom row for Nick's you know Mahomes Mountain which is which is just nonsense again to put Dak Prescott above Brock Purdy is nonsense to put Baker Mayfield of, on top of uh, you know above Brock Purdy it's just nonsense so like those are the things that are say it with me just nonsense man he's good okay. I, I do I agree not bad meaning bad but bad, bad meaning good. good yeah uh 49ers bad get to 500 and now have some extra rest before facing the Chiefs will be coming off a bye here's Trent Williams on the importance of last night's victory it's still early, um, you know. It's only week six, so you know, we we can still write this ship without having to string off nine straight wins, you know. So today was important, you know. It was every bit of a must win without technically being a must win. Yeah, exactly. You you get it, Trent. He does yeah, get it. Totally. Also, they do get it. I would probably eye test and gut feeling feel a little bit better about Brock Purdy in the quarterback hierarchy if he would just take a few notes from. Trent Williams stylist. He has no money. <laughs> well, he's got these ads. He can't got, afford, he's he's got, can't afford all that. I mean, he's not the media has to dress like a science teacher. He could add, all, there's a lot of people that make less than 900 grand a year that dress with <laughs> swag after work. But go ahead. You think the 49ers season is back on track now? Well, if you ask the committee, and I am chairman emeritus, the yeah. season was never off track. Oh. Mm -hmm. It was like, listen, I, as long as they have that running game, which do, I think Christian McCaffrey is the best running back in football and a game changer. Yep. I also think that running game between the 20s clearly works with everyone. Like I think the fourth it, string last it, night. Yeah. Isaac Rando just comes right. and ice, the, ices yeah, the game. 230 last I mean, that, is the, that was the trademark of Kyle's dad. Yeah. It's been the trademark of Kyle throughout. So that running game, those skill position guys, that head coach, I know we're killing the Niners defense. Fred Warner right now. In my opinion, him and Chris Jones, or him, Chris Jones, and Aiden Hutchinson, Pat Sertan are the leading candidate. Yeah. Uh, sorry, that's the end. But, um, yeah, I think um, I agree. I actually agree with Nick there. I never thought the season was off track or that they were in this big, serious trouble. Um, so I don't think that there's 
Um, that's why I even said that game wasn't a must win. And kind of like what Trent was saying as well, where it's like we don't have to rip off nine straight wins to 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 feel like we're um, you know like we're doing anything. So uh, it's very clear to me that the 49ers are a top team. Uh, I think they have their issues like every single team out there right now. I just made that. I just said that similar uh, with the herd talking about how right now it just feels like all these teams are all pretty good and they all have their issues. There's no real stand away team because even the teams that you that are technically pulling away um, or keep winning like the Vikings and uh, the Chiefs. There's still the feeling of like, okay, well, will the Vikings be able to maintain this? Same thing with the Chiefs. Will they be able to keep maintain this with Patrick Mahomes not being top? Will these injuries catch up to them eventually? Will the defense, you know, um, finally not be able to um, overcome the the poor offense, right? Like there, there are those legitimate questions. And then you have a team like the 49ers who have uh, on some moments in some games look absolutely unstoppable but then of course we've seen them drop a couple bad games and it's like it's it's hard to make sense of right it's, it's why you don't try to fit you it's why you typically don't try to figure out who the best team is four five six games into a season right usually it takes a lot more than that but to me right now it's just shaping up that all these teams are just you know a lot of the, the top teams in the nfl are all just really good teams they're not great they're not elite they're just all really good with some made you know with some legitimate issues um i think the 49ers versus the chiefs game will be a really interesting game i think the matchup technically favors the chiefs because of the 49ers defense um more than anything and the fact that that, that the 49ers offense isn't 100 percent fully um you know also uh you have a, another injured running back now so you might be on your third running back the field goal kicker i don't know how banged up he is or are you, are you on your third kicker now like i'm you know i'm i'm not caught up with what the uh final saves or some of these injuries now um but they're definitely more banged up than you would of course want them to be of course also missing none other than christian mccaffrey so you know that kind of doesn't bode well for them because their strong point is their offense whereas the strong point for the chiefs is their defense and the weak point for the 49ers is their defense and the strong and the weak point for their 49 for the for the chiefs is their offense and therefore their offense should be able to be better than uh you know look better and and it just kind of bridges that gap so that will be an exciting game and an interesting game regardless of honestly who's playing or who's injured um but yeah no this was definitely a great win for the 49ers um i i I don't think it needs to be celebrated as this ultra high big massive win because i don't think the seahawks were one the seahawks are definitely banged up and two i'm not so sure the seahawks were ever as great as people were trying to bill them as i was always suspicious as to who the seahawks are um geno smith has definitely impressed me this season for sure um but then you see a game like this and he looked absolutely i mean like he made some throws where you're just like oh my god bro like i I felt silly because i remember praising him in the detroit lions game and i was like oh my god he looked unbelievable he looked great because he did he looked unbelievable he looked like that game he looked like a literal top quarterback in the nfl and then i see this game and i'm like ugh that wasn't very good like what 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 throw did you just make right now what was that what were you seeing what were you looking at um so yeah it'll be interesting to see what how the seahawks end up with their season and if they write their ship so to speak but it feels like the 49ers are back truly in the driver's seat so i wouldn't say they were off track they just were maybe not feeling like they were in the driver's seat now it feels like they're back on the driver's seat they know what they can accomplish they know who they are as the season goes on they should you know get healthier get stronger get better and like i said I firmly believe outside of this being a bigger issue than than we're being led on to believe Christian McCaffrey should be back by at the end of the season. Um, If it is just this tendonitis, um, I, 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 to my knowledge, I've never seen tendonitis not heal after months and months of rest and unless it's more severe and it's truly this purely chronic like this is actually just what you have forever now the level of pain the level of issues and therefore it's just not going to ever really improve like kind of like an almost like an arthritic condition of some port of some of some point or like a uh, a tendon like a, a truly chronic tendon issue that um just maintains its its issues rather than oh you get a flare but now it heals and then you get a flare and then it heals so outside of something truly chronic and life-altering for Christian McCaffrey, 
which would then essentially be career ending from my viewpoint. I'm I'm failing to see why he wouldn't be back. And like I've already said, when he will be back, if he when he comes back, it'll be kind of like the perfect time because he'll be fully fresh, ready to go. Let's go. Have no miles on him for the season, and we'll be able to just be beast mode not to mention a massive boost for the 49ers so i could see him coming back week 15 16 17 or something rolling getting into the playoffs and being like oh yeah you guys forgot who i am um i'm christian mccaffrey let's go um so exciting stuff exciting stuff but those are just my thoughts i'd absolutely love to hear yours what do you guys all think about the 49ers win brock Purdy's and uh impressive performance versus the seattle seahawks let me know in the comments below i read every single comment so whether you agree with me or disagree with me either way let's get in some discussions let's get in some fights but ultimately let's just have some fun and please do consider subscribing we are building an amazing community here and i'd absolutely love to see you part of it i want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to something that we're really excited to be part of i think we're well on our way to doing it and please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm thank you so much and see you next time